to Sister Power. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Our topic for today is it's time for change and it's up to us. It's time for change and it's up to us. And a very special guest today, we have Shada Grant and Danielle Thomas-Ross. Welcome ladies to Sister Power. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Shava, yes, ma'am. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I want you ladies to just give us uh, what is a day like in the day of Danielle and Shava. We'll start with you, Shava. <laughs> oh, my days are always very interesting. Um, I plan weddings and events. Clearly, the climate of the world has changed. So, we're definitely pivoting um, in our strategies and the way that we are doing things over here on this side of the um, world. But um, I absolutely love what I do, but a day in the life is basically, well, it's different every day, but for the most part, I am just communicating with people, following up, up with people and all that fun stuff. So um, I actually started um, doing event planning. I worked for a larger corporation and I did a wedding for the first time and really fell in love with it and then started my company shortly after that. I've been doing it now for about seven years where we are doing mostly weddings. And then um, I have a couple of other different companies that are all, all within the kind of wedding and event realm. So that is uh, uh, me in a nutshell. What is the name of your organization? Vita Chic Weddings and Events. And then I also have a membership site that is called The Curated Wedding that is, um, you know, kind of within the, the scope or the umbrella of uh, Vita Chic, but it is specifically for brides and people that don't necessarily want to hire a wedding planner full time, but still need some help and some guidance and need some one-on-ones and things like that. So, yeah, so I kind of have two main companies underneath my umbrella and kind of work, work through those two um, in, the, in that arena. Danielle, tell Sister Power viewers about you. I'm Danielle, the instigate her, and I provoke, incite, and encourage you to pay yourself now and in the future. By implementing a strategy and starting now, you can make sure that you and your family are fully taken care of. And that is how I show up in the world right now. I am a registered rep and agent with New York Life. And so I focus on connecting with people in my community to help them figure out how to navigate those hard questions, how to plan for the future, how to make sure that they're paying themselves now and taking care of their, their families when it comes time. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, you know, we're in the midst of a pandemic and lessons from the pandemic, I wanna chat about that briefly. And amid heightened racial tensions and the outbreak of a deadly disease, and I think right now is up to 216,000 people have died in the U.S. from the, um, this deadly disease. Good leadership is taking on a new meaning. How has the racial tension and coronavirus affected your business? Shab, I'll start with you. Because, you know, in the wedding business, yeah. that's... Yeah, it has definitely been, um, we've definitely had to pivot, that is for sure. Hawaii has been, and until today, since March the 20th, until today, um, we have been completely shut down in terms of actually doing physical, um, on-site, in-person weddings. So um, it has, it's definitely harder for the demographic uh, that I am in for a lot of different reasons, but I'm, I'm in a couple of different boxes. I'm first, I'm a woman. I'm also a black woman. I'm also a military spouse. Um, so a lot of those um, pieces make it very difficult for me when it comes to funding, when it comes to people taking me seriously and taking my business seriously, when they just see me for who I am. Um, you see me on paper, it's a whole different story, but, but me approaching things and seeing me for who I am, it's a little, it can be a little bit trying. So what we've done in my business is of course, everything is going digital, but for my specific situation, it was, it was really, uh, I really had to think outside of the box a little bit to figure out, okay, now how am I going to make this work? Um, but actually all of the, um, the things that people would consider um, my, things that make my life a little bit more difficult have strengthened me and made me 
um, able to kind of take this on. And because you always have to see things outside of the box. Um, when no one really takes you seriously for, you know, face value, you always have to figure out like, okay, how am I going to do this by myself? And so for me, I know that there are a lot of other um, event planners and things like that on Island that literally after three weeks were like, we're not going to be able to do this anymore because they've never encountered any sort of setbacks or, or roadblocks or anything like that. And for us, it was like, okay, let's sit down. Let's figure out what we need to do. Restructure the team. Okay, who can do things digitally? Who is good with social? Let's really amp up our social media. Let's really amp up um, what we're doing. Like, let's feel out other, other platforms that we haven't had time to look at before. And so it was really a time for us to just sit down and say, okay, what projects did we say we're going to do? What other digital platforms can we really, you know, push and and take to the next level? And it's really done. Um, we've actually, <laughs> surprisingly, the projects and all the things that we've put into place have actually set us up for um, triple what we did last year um, for 2021. Um, so it's, you know, blessing in disguise. It gave us the time and the push the little extra push to be able to think outside the box a little bit and and actually push our company to the next level all right danielle yeah. you know what has changed in your business what, what what organization do you work for you said you're an agent i'm a representative for a uh, registered representative for new york life and so i'm insurance agent and i help people create strategies for their uh care now and in the future right so how do you take care of that planning that needs to happen to make sure that you retire or that you're taking care of um, in case you come up with a chronic illness or how to create your own pension, right? It's all possible. We have to just have to have the strategy and know how to put everything in place. And so prior to COVID, I started with New York Life recently. I've, um, in March, I went full time. So it was right at the time when everything else was shutting down and things were changing. And business-wise, it's been incredible. I focus on the Black community. I reach out to people every day, all day long. I have these amazing conversations that lead to realizations of how we're under-leveraged, how we're under-prepared for the future. And so it's really rewarding because prior to um, coming in with New York Life, I was uh, just business coaching and mindset coaching. So the instigate her was what my overall business was. And I was showing up in a way specifically to help entrepreneurs and business owners have a strategy that takes them to the next level. And a lot of that for business owners and entrepreneurs, it turned out to be an emotional like roller coaster, right? How to, how to rise to the occasion, get past your fears and work through everything that it takes to actually have the business become what you want. And so I was showing up at that capacity. And so it, to me, it was a natural pivot because once you, once you grow that business, how are you making sure that you're taking care of yourself so you can get off of the ride that you created, right? So many of us go into it and we go into the grind and the hustle and the day to day, but it, we don't take the time to think of and figure out one day I want to step back. One day I want to sit down. One day I want to just enjoy the fruits of my labor. And so this partnership has helped me be able to put that in place for my community, for my loved ones, for the people that I care about. Wow, that sounds wonderful. Well, we're 19 days out um, from the election. So let's talk about the importance of voting. We can talk about that. How are you getting ready for election day, ladies? How are you getting ready? Oh, we'll let Danielle start. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Getting ready, uh, it's interesting. I've already voted. I already cast my vote. Um, and getting ready looks like me continuing to have the conversations with people who are close to me. Um, I feel like there's this age range between after high school and young adults where they're, they're in the streets protesting, but very few of them had registered. Actually shown up to vote. Actually yeah. shown up to vote. They had never yeah. voted before. You know, I even have people who were um, in my life and in my age range that had never went out to vote, right? Like even some celebrities have stood up and said, okay, I've never voted. I'm going to do it this time, right? So yeah. making sure that I'm having that, to me, the preparation is like 
get out there and do the right thing. That if you want to see change, it means that we have to make the right choices to make change happen. All right. Shava, yeah. are you getting ready to vote? I yeah, I, I sent my um, I sent my ballot in already as well. I wanted to make sure that <laughs> if anything was going to get double counted, it was mine. No. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's not funny at all. Um, no, I I actually so I am trying to have more conversations with people. I feel that it in the past when I have done things, you know, put it, putting it up on Facebook and making it this big, I voted and all that. It has not really impacted people as much as when I actually have a conversation with someone and try to, and, and just casually let them know, oh, you know, in your state, you can do it, you know, and just, just doing that, the more casual approach um, has seemed to to be more impactful than than standing up with a sign and saying, oh, well, I voted already, you know? Um, so that is what I am doing over on my side because I just feel like that the the warm touch and the, uh, the just more casual approach um, is better with, with the people that I end up touching. So um, that is what I'm doing. But yes, I, I already voted as well. Um, I even, it's funny because, you know, when she was talking about, people that are even, you know, our age and things like that, not voting. My, my husband does not, has never voted ever. And he's voting um, this year might be because I'm forcing him to, <laughs> I live with him and I, you know, I can force him to do that. But, um, but I, I really do feel strongly that we do have another group of people that that def has never done it before or doesn't never saw the importance of it. I do feel like we have people that are going to show up. Um, I really appreciate it. I know Michelle Obama started her, um, her campaign of let's, let's be a squad, you know, the voting squad. And I think that is a magnificent idea because that it, when, when it comes down to it, that is what's really going to make so the impact and actually, you know, persuade people that it is very important and that, you know, that they should get out there and do it is having someone else, I mean, even just the, the gentle reminder of like, hey, you want to ride with me? We're going to go vote. You know, those type of things. It's making it a social thing that where it doesn't seem like this big daunting thing for people, especially when they haven't done it before, right? It just seems like this, this big daunting thing that they don't really understand and just kind of make, making it important, but also something that's really easy to do and just more casual. Um, I just, I really love the fact that she decided to do that because I do think that's going to make a big difference too in our, in our turnout, especially in our community, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm super happy about that, but I do think that that is going to be the biggest way to impact people to actually get out there and do it and not just, you know, say they're going to, or throw their stickers up there or put it on social media, but actually showing up to do it. Absolutely. Our forever first lady, Michelle Obama, and she's making a big impact for people to get out there and vote. Yeah. It's important that we get out there and vote. And, you know, our Democratic vice presidential nominee, Senator Harris, is on the cover of Elle magazine. I and saw that. December issue. Look amazing. Ah, oh, so it's happy about that. That's amazing. Isn't that most fabulous? She's on the cover of Elle magazine and she's in a broad interview and she's talking and expanding about racial inequality and her upbringing. What else do you know that you admire about Senator Harris, Danielle? I was just listening to her speak this morning um, as she was addressing the Senate about, um, yeah, they were, they were in session for electing the next, for putting in place the next judge. And so just her poise and her grace and her um, clarity in addressing what she felt like should be different at this time. She felt like they should be in session at this time to talk about COVID, to talk about the needs of the American people, to talk about the financial issues that we are facing. Um, so I admire her the way she showed up this morning for that. Yeah, well, Stacey Abrams is an American politician, lawyer, voting rights activist, and former Georgia uh, gubernatorial candidate. And she has a new book out that I can't wait to read that's coming out, uh, you know, I don't know, next year or sometime, While Justice Sleeps. So, Shava, 
what is it about some of the characteristics of Stacey Abrams that you admire? Oh, I love her straightforwardness. Um, she is not scared. She's not scared. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that I, I, I admire her straightforwardness and the fact that she really is not afraid to put things out there no matter what time it is, no matter what the climate is, no matter what is happening. If she has something to say, she's going to say it. And the, the timing of this book is just epic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm interested to see how that all plays out. Cause I, when does it come out? Is it coming out this? I think it was May. Week? It's supposed to come out in May. Oh, is it? Oh, I thought it was coming out sooner. Yeah, okay, well, we'll look for it. I think it. Sure. I think they might have pushed it. Pushed it up. Actually, it's coming. It's coming out a little bit sooner than I believe. But um, I yeah, she's amazing. Yeah, she is. <laughs> Young ladies, queens, where do you see the future? Danielle, where do you see the future? Oh, goodness. You know, I'm, I'm, I've been leaning into this time specifically in the sense that it's given us all this alone time and the opportunity to push up and lean into these spaces that we may have shied away from that, uh, are, cause, that are calling for us to, to change within ourselves in ways, right? That <clears throat> the way the world has shifted with the way that we communicate with one another, the way we mm -hmm. engage, the way we have to spend this type of alone time, right? That it's really called for us to go within. And I think that, that is, that's huge. That I've also witnessed people coming to realizations of who they are and what's important to them and, and how they want to show up and how they want to move in the world and who, they, who they're called to be at this time in a way that wasn't present for them because they didn't have the opportunity to shut down and hear it and experience it for themselves. So I see this as being a prolific shift, a paradigm shift in the world, right? On so many levels in the spaces that we can grow into for who we are in the world personally and who we are in the world as a people. Oh, I like that. So Shava, what message that is important to you right now you're on that stage and we want to get people out to vote. What message is important to you at this moment? Oh my goodness. Um, wow, that is a, that is an interesting question. Um, definitely at this moment, um, I, I don't think that people understand the value of voting. I still think that that's something that, that we need to have more discussions about as opposed to, um, or versus having these more combative they're not, you can't even really call them conversation. So I think just being, just actually, just above that probably is having conversations, um, whether it be about race, whether it be about voting, whether, you know, whatever the case is, I feel like right now is such a, especially with the rise of social media and it just being so much easier, actually having conversations with people is going to be the only way that anything gets accomplished. Um, because we just spend so much time talking at each other, or just throwing our opinion out there, blanketing, you know, this is what I feel, and then kind of ignoring, uh, you know, the actual dialogue that should be happening after that. So I would say whether, no matter what it is, I mean, I have friends that are definitely on the other side of the political line um, as me, and we are now taking the time to have more of these conversations um, so that we can understand and really, really understand, not just say, yeah, I hear you, or or hear enough to say that you think that it's not right, but really hearing why they do feel like that Ooh. and why they are, you know, voting or doing things the way that they're doing or feeling that uh, about another person or race the way that they feel. Um, because it's all deep rooted and a lot of it is learned. A lot of it is, you know, passed down. I know that my whole lifetime before the last, you know, 10 years, I just automatically saw myself as a Republican when it came down to it, when I actually did have conversations with people and, and start to look at things and start to do things for myself, I was like, I am not a Republican at all. I just, that was something that was just kind of passed down, but I had never actually had conversations with people enough to really be able to form that opinion for myself. So I think that's the overlying kind of message is just be human enough to have a conversation with someone more than just telling them something or throwing your ideas out there and, and 
listening enough to tell them that you're opposing whatever the, it, you know, the other side of the thought is. Great. Well, Danielle, uh, becoming better stewards of our time, energy, and money, and how they are all one and the same. Elaborate about that. Tell us about that. They, it, they just so are, and we don't give it enough um, recognition. Yeah, Shava's like, like, just a smile on your face, like, because it's something to me, it's something for me that is under talked about and under realized, right? That our time and the way we spend our time and how it affects our the money that we have um, is huge. Because if we don't rec recognize that the less time we put towards focusing on how to create a strategy for ourselves, right? Out, even outside of our business, let's just say within our home, just just call it what, what we do as far as the budget, just what we choose to spend our money on, that that has a huge impact on what we have later, right? So the difference of, of just taking the time to sit down and look at it overall, right? And then the energy that we put into it, the words that we say, what, the thoughts that we think, that a lot of times I've sat down with business owners and they're making good money, but they're constantly saying, I'm broke. I'm like, why, why are you saying that? Why are you putting your energy into that, right? And so energetically, what you put into the world, what you say to yourself about yourself, right? That results in the money that you're able to make, to generate, to keep, to grow. And once we become more connected and, and, and realize that for ourselves, then it'll change. It'll change dynamically. It's changed. Wow. And, and you know, there was a collage out there on uh, social media, and I want to bring that up. And it's about why we should vote for the people who are unable to vote. And they had the pictures of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd and Ahmaud Arbery, uh, what was so touching to me. And Shava, what I would like to ask you, what does supporting each other look like in real time? Hmm. Um, I definitely think that the, the um, place that you're located uh, dictates what support looks like. Um, I, I have lived all over the world. I'm a military spouse. I was a military brat. My dad's in the army. Um, and I've seen the climate shift from place to place where we have lived. And, um, the most important piece to show support is, is to, to voice, you know, in, injustices. If there are injustices, you need to voice what you see is wrong. So that's the most important thing. But I do think that in every, uh, in all of these little micro pockets of culture and things like that, it definitely shows its face in a different way. It needs to be addressed in a different way. Um, because in some places it, you know, be just kind of getting out there and saying, hey, this is what's going on and we need to change this does something. Um, but in other places um, like the South and, you know, it that does not do anything but, um, but kind of light a fire underneath the other, you know, the opposing sides um, behind. So it really, I do think that it does really matter where you are because everything is situational, but I think having a voice and making sure that you voice it in, you know, whichever way is appropriate for where you are um, is really important. Um, I really, I mean, I, I'm going to say conversations and talking and speaking and communicating with people over and over and over again because I don't feel like people understand the power of just of just giving that energy to someone in a very real authentic way that they can that they can absorb it absorb the positive you know the positivity of you just really being a, a human on the same level with them um, and that is is literally the only thing that's going to change anything no matter if we're different political sides or anything like that you you know whatever your feelings are being able to actually have a conversation with someone to where you feel like it's human to human is the, is the only way we're going to be able to make any sort of difference. Yeah, that, 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 our voice can change the world. That's for sure. And Daniel, you sent me a nice quote today or something uh, I think that I want you to speak about. You said, how, how we continue to rise, not as an act of endurance, 
but an act of defiance. Explain that. I think that's that's black people, period. Right? That that just kind of sums up the essence of who we are and how we've shown up in the world. That and 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 um, BIPOC period, black, indigenous, people of color that um, are continuance to to rise to occasions, rise in positions, rise in spite of, right? Continue to move forward, um, continue to smile, continue to have joy, continue to, to greet one another with love, right? That all of that it can be an act of defiance, not necessarily endurance, but defying what is the overall tone of what we have to go through on a day-to-day basis, right? And finding, yeah. and finding, um, yeah, those pockets of joy in life, regardless. Well, I can't believe we're going to have to do another in closing, ladies. Just give us a minute each. What can we do where we are right now? What can we do where we are? I think everyone knows what I'm going to say. <laughs> so I've been you saying it the whole time. <laughs> but um, I'm going to try to rephrase it so that I sound like I'm coming up with something profound and new. So, but <laughs> I do believe that the thing that we can do to be most impactful is, well, one, vote, right? That's vote. Everybody vote. If you haven't voted yet, vote. <laughs> So, um, but uh, but having those conversations, just on on a person to person level, having those conversations, I feel like that's going to be the most impactful thing. So, I'll, right. after Danielle, I'll come up with something more profound, but it's going to be the same. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's very important. That's very important. That, no, that is very important. I yeah. agree. Oh, so Danielle, where what can we do where we are in one minute or less? Show up as our whole selves all the time. I feel like. That is exactly what we need to do. Love it. In all, in all the spaces, show up as the fullness of who we are in the world, the fullness of who we are in ourselves, and own that, and and be fully expressed in each and every moment. I love that. Well, you know, love before it. we leave, before we leave, did you want to say something right quick, Shava? You- no, 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 I'm good. I'm just saying I love it. I love Danielle's energy. She's so great. <laughs> I love you. I like, so I like great. both of you. But I want us to leave. And let's show the viewers what's important. Let's show, put on our mask. There we have it. We have our mask on. And we are asking each individual, love yourself and each other and wear those masks. And as in closing, first of all, I want to thank you, Shava. Grant, and I want to thank you, Danielle, for appearing on Sister Power. Thank you so much. But I was reading this, and I'm going to close with this from Essence Magazine. And this is what Coca-Cola is saying. Together, we must share hope, demand justice, admit we can do more, stand as one, right wrongs, Listen and create a better future in racism. And together we will, ladies. Thank you so much. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you for tuning in to Sister Power. Aloha.